Welcome to Balancing the Ledger, where tech and finance intersect. I'm Robert Hackett. I'm Jed Vietchner. And today we're joined by Dominic Williams, the president and chief scientist of DFINITY. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's jump into it. I want to hear from you a description of what DFINITY actually is. Jen and I have been reading the white paper. It's not an easy document to get sure. through. Uh, you know, there's neurons, there's an AI computer, there's algorithmic governance. Um, so break it down for us. What is DFINITY? So uh, DFINITY is a decentralized network that creates something called the internet computer, which uh, is a public compute cloud that provides a new way of uh, building and hosting software systems and internet services. So how's that different from Amazon Web Services, for example? First of all, uh, you know, services like Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud and Microsoft are, are run by um, you know, uh, pr uh, proprietary. They're run by uh, internet giants. And the internet computer, if you like, extends the internet itself so that it can host uh, software and internet services. So it's a public uh, infrastructure. But it's also um, a new way of building software. So um, we're aiming to reduce the cost of building systems by simplifying things. Um, it's a hack-proof, tamper-proof environment. Uh, it's always available, so you don't have to worry about you know, running hot spares and things like that. Um, systems are more interoperable. Um, we have ways of preserving the privacy of uh, personal information and confidential content. And we also support something called autonomous software uh, that we hope will provide a new way of um, building internet services, what we call open internet services. You mentioned an internet computer. Uh, now, Vitalik Buterin, who is the creator of Ethereum, he's talked about wanting to build a world computer with his system. Uh, how does Definity differ from what Ethereum is doing? There are similarities. And, you know, we're great admirers of the uh, Ethereum system. Um, but uh, the difference is that, you know, Ethereum is more focused on this concept of smart contracts. And Definity is more focused on uh, providing a, a way to um, build and host to arbitrary software systems and internet services. What would be an example of something that you could build on top of Definity? Like, why would users use this? What's a killer app? I think there are a lot. You know, um, you know for example, security is a fundamental problem. Right? So there's a lot of people that um, want to build systems that are more secure. Uh, availability is a fundamental problem. Um, there are a lot of people who, you know, all things being equal, would prefer to build on a public infrastructure and avoid becoming a captive customer of a proprietary service. Um, so there's a very broad range of applications, anything from you know, private business systems, uh, you know, something even a you know, municipal council might build to collect parking ticket fines, right? Mm. Right the way through consumer internet services and uh, business internet services. So you could imagine, uh, for example, creating an open version of Salesforce mm. using autonomous software. Um, right the way through to, um, you know, through, through an open version of LinkedIn to a dating app or something like that. Yeah, so if these computers, I mean, it's going to be a network of computers, but they're not going to be housed in Amazon or Microsoft warehouses, where yeah. are they going to live? Yeah, so by the way, one of the differences is that, you know, when you use Amazon, you see lots and lots, and lots of different virtual instances. So the internet computer is like a, a giant virtual supercomputer, right? So that, that everybody shares. So that's a little bit different. But that single giant virtual supercomputer that, ev that everybody shares um, is created by this network of, of machines that will be distributed around the world in data centers. In data centers. So not something like that I would have at home or that Robert would have at home, but data centers, you know, that we're talking third parties or what kinds of companies? Um, you know, uh, so one way of thinking about it is, you know, the internet was built out by ISPs um, who connected their individual networks together in one big internet work, right? Um, I think there are about 7,500, 8,000 ISPs, internet service providers around the world. So we see the internet computer being built out by data centers in a similar way. And there are quite a few independent, standalone data centers, some very large ones, actually. Um, but you know, most ISPs will also run a data center service. One aspect of the project that was really interesting to me was it seems like there's identity baked in at a very fundamental level in a way that we don't see with Bitcoin. Um, can you talk a little bit about this? Yeah, I think you know, the, the, the individual machines that, that, that connect to the network have a, crypto, a pseudonymous cryptographic identity. And you know, the protocol processes all these identities in order to produce the internet computer. And the reason things work differently is the demands 
a difference. So, um, you know, if, if you look at the sort of history of blockchain, Bitcoin came out in 2008, and it takes about an hour. It can take longer, it can take less to finalize transactions. Then Ethereum came out in 2015, and it used uh, a new version of proof of work um, called Ghost, and it could finalize transactions in about 10 minutes. And Affinity finalizes transactions in under five seconds, which um, is, is, you know, helps us produce this decentralized cloud functionality. And part of the way you do that is through is algorithmically. So these are not necessarily humans making these governance decisions. You're relying on algorithms or bots. Well, so the, the governance system is completely, actually completely separate. Uh, the network does have a governance system, um, and it's an algorithmic open governance system. And this performs a lot of different roles. So, for example, um, you know, on the one hand, it might, um, you know, allow someone to submit a proposal to close down something that some people think would harm the network, like an assassination market, and that's very different to a coders law environment like Ethereum. On the other hand, um, the governance system also processes uh, network operations uh, instructions, like you know, create a new shard or partition of computers, move this module of software from that place to this place, that kind of thing. So who gets to decide if I come into your system and I say, you know, I want this assassination market, as you said. <laughs> uh, or you know, drug marketplace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How does that get booted off the system? So the, the governance system is configured um, to act in, ultimately in the, the best interest of the value of the network. right? And uh, proposals can be submitted to it, and they have different topics. Um, one topic would be economics, right? We want to you know, modify uh, the block reward, for example. Um, another topic might be cryptography. You know, we want to change this technical piece of the system. And uh, it's called the blockchain nervous system. And there are units of voting called neurons. And these uh, neurons are created by depositing definities. And uh, the voting power of a neuron is proportioned to the size of the deposit made. And uh, the Deposited definitives are locked up for some minimum amount of time. It takes a while to dissolve a neuron to get the, the tokens back. And the longer you configure the dissolve period to be, right, um, the greater the rewards you get for voting and, the, uh, and you get an additional bump in, in, in the voting power. So a lot of people, of course, will want to run these neurons but won't necessarily have the skills needed to make decisions. So they'll configure them to follow other people's neurons. So for example, um, only a few people in the world really um, have the expertise um, to evaluate a, a proposal on cryptography. Right? It's a very complex area of computer science. So um, typically what people might do is you know, configure their neuron to follow the neurons of five you know, cryptographers of good repute and say, look, if three of the five vote to adopt a proposal, also vote to adopt. If three of the five vote reject, also vote to reject. If neither of those things happen by a timeout, just vote to reject. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, the thing will cascade to decisions on these proposals. We brushed on Ethereum earlier, uh, and you know, Ethereum has gathered so much mind share over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, it's attracted a ton of developer interest. How is Definity going to compete with that sort of brand that Ethereum has built for itself? Well, we love Ethereum. You know, we 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 want Ethereum to succeed. So Definity. Um, is different to Ethereum in a number of very important ways. Um, first of all, um, it's focused much more on becoming a decentralized cloud and providing a means to host software systems on an open public infrastructure network, right? And also to enable um, you know, potentially mass market internet services uh, that it, to be built in a different way that's more open, right? So um, that involves a different set of technical trade-offs. Um, Ethereum, of course, is a, a code is law network, right? And um, the internet computer has this um, algorithmic governance system um, called the blockchain nervous system, which uh, can get involved, for example, in all kinds of different aspects of the network. You know, uh, as we mentioned, anything from, you know, uh, freezing the assassination market that everyone thinks is a bad thing through to um, mod modifying some of the network parameters. Well, we'll be sure to steer clear of any assassination markets in the interim. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Dominic. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I'm Robert Hackett. I'm Jen Vietchner. And for more Balancing the Ledger, come to fortune.com. See you next time.